Hello, everybody. Welcome to the first panel of a two part series on internships and networking and internship opportunities at UWM. We are so delighted to have you with us today. My name is Christine Wolf, and I'm the Assistant Director of Global and International Studies here at UWM. And I'm very proud to say that this webinar is a joint project between Global and International Studies, CLACS, or the Center for Latin American and Caribbean Studies, and also African and African Diaspora Studies. And I'll have my colleagues introduce themselves in a minute after we go over some housekeeping uh, points. Um, so first of all, this is being recorded. So if that isn't something that you want to participate in, you're free to lo log off now and know that the link will be available to you at a later time. Uh, we'll be sending that out to all the registrants. Um, and please post your questions in the chat as we go. We're going to introduce our speakers in a moment and there'll be ample opportunity at the end for Q&A, but feel free to use the chat. And then at the end, um, when Q&A begins, you can also raise your hand um, and ask your questions live if you wish. Um, the next webinar in this series will be on April 8th, so mark your calendars for that, um, and we will be looking at career development and having a student perspective um, during that webinar, so please feel free to join us then too. Um, so without further ado, I will let my UWM colleagues introduce themselves. Thank you, Christine. Um, hi everyone, my name is Amy and I'm the program specialist at CLACS, the Center for Latin American and Caribbean Studies at UWM. I also serve as the internship coordinator for students who are majoring in LACUSO, which is Latin American, Caribbean, and U.S. Latinx studies. And I also serve as the internship coordinator for students um, obtaining the certificate in LACS, which is Latin American and Caribbean studies. Um, I'm happy to introduce our first panelist, Johanna, who is the founding director of Bembe Drum and Dance, which is a community-based cultural performing arts program here in Milwaukee. So without further ado, I'd like to welcome Johanna to present. Thank you, Amy. Um, so as Amy mentioned, my name is Johanna de los Santos, and I'm the founder and current board chair for Bembe Drum and Dance. And we'll just pull up our slideshow here. And if you could go to the present mode, thank you. So I'm a proud UWM graduate, um, graduated in, with a bachelor's in uh, international relations um, <clears throat> with a minor in Spanish and economics. And I did all of my coursework through the Latin American and Caribbean studies program. Um, while I was there, I also did study abroad in Puerto Rico, Cuba and Haiti through my coursework and went on to do my master's in Latin American and Caribbean studies at New York University, where I focused on um, social movement theory throughout Latin America and the role that arts and media played in um, changing uh, social movements. So um, I'm a Milwaukee native and I was really inspired um, when my students, uh, my children started attending uh, Bruce Guadalupe Community School um, and I was inspired because they have a, a really well-known music program, um, but I wanted to bring um, access for Latino students at that school um, to learn more about the African uh, heritage uh, that is included in the Latino identity and also just general um, African diaspora throughout Latin America. So together with some local artists and the support of um, a few small seed funders, um, including uh, UWM, I was able to start this program in 2015. And since then we've grown to work with youth, teens and adults throughout uh, the city of Milwaukee. So today I'll be presenting a little bit about the work that we're doing and the internship opportunities we have available for um, college students. So our first internship um, <clears throat> centers on curriculum and evaluation. So I'll go a little bit into what that's about. Uh, we have a marketing and development internship. And while we don't have a separate nonprofit management internship, both of the curriculum and evaluation and marketing and development uh, provide a lot of access to learning nonprofit management. We can go to the next. 
So about Bembe, founded in 2015, Bembe Drum and Dance is a community-based and led cultural performing arts program for youth and families with a mission to increase accessible opportunities for Latinx and other multi-ethnic youth of color to connect to African-based culture as a source of pride within their heritage. Through ethnomusicology and positive youth development, Bembe seeks to inspire music and dance performance skills, intergenerational connection, and collective cultural identity exploration through percussion-based Afro-Latino musical culture. Bembe engages hundreds of youth and families each year. Next. Our current programs, we have a public access program, which is called Academia Bembe. We offer drum and dance to children, teens, and adults, all different um, traditions. So it, throughout Latin America, there's so many different um, African-based traditions um, and rhythms, but also dances. So one of the things we're most proud of is that a lot of people might recognize certain really popular rhythms or certain popular types of music or dance, but we go into so many depths of diversity within each of those so that there's a lot of nuance and um, multiplicity within that. There's so much diversity within um, the culture. We have school-based programs year round. Um, they are in-house programs, they're year round and they're multi-year. So instead of the drop in, you know, five or six weeks sort of um, residency, we provide uh, multi-year in-house performing arts programs for various schools. It is after school, but it also supplements the curriculum. So where, the, where uh, students may not have access to learning about um, the African diaspora or the history of the African diaspora, we provide that in an after school setting. We're currently, um, due to the pandemic, we're somewhat limited. We're currently at the Bruce Guadalupe Community Schools the Milwaukee Spanish Immersion School and Escuela Verde. We also have Terapia Bembe, which means therapy Bembe. We provide um, certified music therapy with, through Afro-Latino drumming to students at the MPS Student Success Center. And those are students that um, through various um, challenges that they're, they're having, they are at risk of expulsion from MPS. So this is a restorative justice center that's managed by the Marquette University Center for Peacemaking. And Ben Bay is a part of their Monday through Thursday therapeutics, um, which is a really um, amazing honor and opportunity to support these students. And we also provide music therapy um, and intergenerational programming with the seniors at the UCC Senior Day Center. So it's been hard for us to be away for the last year, but that's one of our most successful programs where our youth um, and seniors play together in an ensemble called the Conjunto de Oro, which is the golden ensemble. So it's usually a summer program and they learn practice together and then they perform um, at the senior center for many of the families. And then we have a study abroad each year for our students and families to travel to Mayaguez, Puerto Rico to learn about the history of Afro-Puerto Rican um, culture, music, dance, and then also the agricultural movement there and how um, music and dance have been influenced by that history. And hopefully this summer we'll be hosting them here in Milwaukee um, for some classes and trainings and talk series. You can proceed. So based on our connection, I hope this works out. This is a very short one, 60 second um, promo for our workshops with youth, if you could press play. You'll, you'll need volume for this. Well, I guess the volume is not working. <laughs> um, I'll share links after the, um, the presentation. Um, it's unfortunate. Uh, so we have our students here learning Bomba from Puerto Rico. Um, and then we also have on the next slide a video of our Brazilian um, 
music series with students and adults. Um, if you go to the next slide. Maybe the sound will work for this. So our students under normal conditions would be performing throughout the year. Um, we do community performances that lead our audiences from West Africa all the way through South America, the Caribbean, and then we end up in the United States. And each of those locations has different rhythms that the students present, um, dance movements, um, families and grandparents and teachers are involved <clears throat> in all of that. It's a really amazing experience. So we're looking forward to someday getting back to um, those community performances. But for this upcoming year, anyone who's a part of them, they will get to enjoy some outdoor um, drum and dance <clears throat> circles that are safe and take into consideration all of our guidelines. Um, but these were just some good examples of our potential and um, some of the, the music. So hopefully you get to access those links and can hear some of the rhythms um, that our students learn. So this is just some at a glance, um, what we were able to do um, throughout the last year amid the pandemic. And it's a little bit of an idea of who will work with this coming year and hopefully things start to ease up a bit in the fall. We were able to offer over 400 workshops, work with over 300 unique students, um, had over 4,000 total workshop attendances. So that's just how many times someone engaged our programs. Um, we worked with six professional artists, 10 community artists, and we had nine program partners because we're a community-based organization. We collaborate with not just schools, but other community organizations um, like Casa Romero and the UCC and, and different um, partners so that we can um, not only make sure that our programs are as accessible as possible, but also that their locations are um, safe and accessible to all. So we'll go to the next. So on to our internship opportunities. We're seeking interns with an interest in Afro-Latino musical culture, seeking to grow their knowledge of curriculum design, nonprofit management, marketing, and development. This intern will work side by side with Bembe's program manager, musical director, and board chair. So our program director, Imani Jalil, she is also a graduate of UWM. She graduated in, with, in the fine arts program under um, the direction of Fern Kolker um, in the African diaspora dance track. Boni Plo Benavides, she's a graduate of the UW system um, and also Arizona State University and she studied Afro-Latino percussion and she's a master drummer um, originating from Bogota, Colombia, um, but has been living in Milwaukee for over 10 years. And then um, I introduced myself at the beginning, so I'll just move on to the next uh, portion here. This internship position will require eight to 15 hours per week. Um, there'll be two scheduled administrative meetings per week. They're more like planning and kind of work sessions with our staff. Um, there will be ideally some in-person presence at our workshops. We're currently um, have, holding workshops outdoors as well as indoor with windows open and no more than nine people in a class. Um, we have distancing, we have assigned seating, mask requirements, um, and we're proud to say that we've been running workshops um, on and off in person since last um, spring and we have not had any cases and we also have a tracing system in place. So, and our, our whole team has been vaccinated. Um, and then some remote independent work. So that would be a creative work um, or independent uh, work on a laptop. Next. So our marketing and development internship uh, responsibilities would include promoting Bembe programs and providing updates using the MindBody online software. This is something that we're even new to. So if you've never heard of it, um, it's totally fine. It's just its own kind of software for um, performing arts and different health wellness based organizations. Uh, we use Canva for design, we use YouTube, um, and then 
um, maintaining social media. We're mostly Instagram and Facebook and gaining and engaging followers. So these are responsibilities that we would expect uh, an intern to be um, either moderately knowledgeable about or just excited to learn. Um, we don't require a whole lot of skills prior, but just someone who's interested in being on online and interested in learning how to write um, marketing type and fundraising type language. And then for grants, we would ask for support. Um, our staff writes grants and um, funder updates, and we would ask for support in that area. We would also mentor this intern on how to look for funding, how to prospect and set grants up, and then how the basics of writing a grant. So anyone who's interested in learning how to fundraise either for a nonprofit or for themselves as an independent artist um, or look into these types of opportunities, this is um, a really great mentoring opportunity to be walked through that process and challenged in that way, but given a lot of support. So for required skills, I probably should have said preferred. We do prefer that people be um, at least moderately bilingual if possible. If you're not a Spanish speaker, you would not be um, disqualified from this internship. We would just structure it slightly differently. So um, I should probably strike that, that first um, bullet point. Uh, so it's a preferred. Um, but if it's English only, that we, we could definitely structure it for that as well. Good written communication, marketing and development is all about expressing ideas. Um, so a baseline for that. Artistic creative for this marketing and development position. If you're, you're someone who just likes um, you're creative or you're an artistic, you have an artistic vision that's really helpful when creating basic graphics. Comfortable working in Google Drive, Google Docs, Canva, and excellent email. Uh, communication and virtual organization skills. As we've all learned in the virtual setting, um, communication is so important. And I know internships are just a few hours a week, but it is important that um, com email communication is um, regular. Go to the next. Curriculum creation intern. Um, let me just back up one. Projects and responsibilities. So this is um, really for somebody who's very passionate about history, geography, area studies of the African diaspora. Um, so curriculum creation in turn would write and curate short curatorial orientations for workshops of specific traditions. An example might be the students are learning about tamborito, which is an, an Afro-based um, Panamanian rhythm and dance. So what could be a graphic with you know, three bullet points or a colorful map that shows the community where this rhythm originated in Panama um, or what part of West Africa the rhythm came from that merged with um, the culture in Panama. Uh, so that setting something like that up, basically researching it and making it something that's, that students can understand from any age group um, or finding a video that goes along with it. Um, create and design colorful cultural graphics for posters, postcards, and curriculum materials. So while the majority of our participants are youth, their families and their parents and their grandparents and their aunts and uncles all love Bembe. And, you know, and like I said, under normal circumstances, they come to our shows. They're also anxious to learn some of these things because it affects their identity as well and what they're learning about their culture and their history. So we like to send students home with postcards, with um, fun posters to put up in their bedroom. They're a part of this musical group, but they can be proud of learning all these things about um, Afro-Latino culture. Um, even if they don't uh, identify as Latino, it is something that is um, a very beautiful tradition and they often want to represent you know, their participation in the program. So creating those that are educational Curate YouTube playlists to support Bembe curriculum plans, um, specifically for our students that do have to remain virtual at this time. Support Bembe team and structuring and presenting workshops from visiting cultural artists. We anticipate this summer and potentially in the fall that we will have um, artists visiting us from Puerto Rico, Cuba, Colombia to teach workshops and present um, trainings for local artists here in Milwaukee. And so supporting that um, and with support um, from us, this is a learning opportunity. 
standardize one four month semester for a high school student for independent study credit. So if you have experience in creating curriculum or if you don't, this is a learning opportunity to take really interesting information and in a multidisciplinary curriculum and standardize it for a high school student to gain uh, independent study. Provide basic administrative and program support. So required skills are similar to marketing, except just sort of, the, sort of the focus on the history and curriculum research, some experience or passion for K through 12 education or adult continuing education, um, and comfortable attending some in person. So for this one, it wouldn't be as as often, um, but it's still somewhat you need to understand the workshops and how they function. Um, so that we would be asking for that support. Next. Both internships will also gain exposure to key components of nonprofit management, how to structure a program, creating a budget, sustainability, understanding revenue from various sources and cultivating those relationships and then reporting on outcomes. So an intern will gain exposure to these processes if they're interested in it, but not necessarily be responsible for a lot of duties related to that. So anyone who's interested in learning more, those are some of the benefits. And then I think it's important for people to know the environment um, so that we are a very small team. Um, we are a group of cultural artists. Um, so, you know, less, analytical, but still very focused and mission driven. Um, we are community minded. Um, the work would be project based. So while we would have regular communication, there would we would require people to be somewhat self motivated and be driven to um, accomplish their goals without a, a ton of, um, you know, a sort of like overseeing each step of the way, but providing a lot of support and always accessible, um, but project based. This is a challenging and growth oriented opportunity. So we have a lot to offer in terms of years and years of um, doing this work. And also, you know, this is, uh, you know, I'm the board chair, but during my day job, I run a multi-city uh, arts-based nonprofit. So I have many years to offer um, a growth oriented opportunity if anyone's interested in learning how to run an organization. Very nurturing and supportive. I would say as not just an internship that this is also definitely a mentorship and that's what we believe in as an educational model. Next. Benefits. Um, so any interns would have access to our adult drum classes. Um, we have a beginners class and an advanced class. Beginners are just anyone, even if you've never touched an instrument in your life. Um, and then our advanced class is primarily for students that have a background in music or have been trained in, in any type of instrumentation for music. Um, there is a modest stipend provided um, and one-on-one -on -one mentoring on any area of focus that you're interested in pursuing more intensively and a letter of recommendation upon successful completion of the internship. These are just some highlights from the last year. Um, so many years of beautiful experiences, but um, you'll notice some of the photos are from January and February of last year before everything shut down, but we were able to um, provide outdoor workshops um, all the way from May through um, November. And then we went online to virtual for um, actually until this week. And next week we start up our um, outdoor and in-person workshops again with all of our modifications in place. Next. I think we're taking questions at the very end of this presentation. So we'll, if you just go to the very last slide, it has my email address, um, but I can also put it in the chat. Oh, I didn't include it. I'll put it in the chat. <laughs> so thank you for your time and interest. And I'm looking forward to um, taking your questions and learning about the other opportunities from our panelists. Well, thank you so much, Johanna. I'm sorry we were not able to get the audio working for the two videos and your slides. Um, I will definitely send out a follow-up email to our registrants and attendees here today and include those links to the YouTube videos um, in that email.
And so, and then for those of you who do not know me, uh, my name is Rachel Hagland, and I work in the Department of African and African Diaspora Studies and the Program Associate there and Internship Coordinator. And I have the pleasure of introducing our next guest speaker, Zari Miller, and she's the Internship Coordinator and Legislative Aid for the Milwaukee County Board of Supervisors. And she's here to share a little bit of information about their internship program and opportunities this summer and fall. So thank you, Zari, and over to you. Thank you so much, Rachel. Um, so I'll give a little bit of information about myself. I also am a UWM graduate. I graduated um, in the winter of 2017, so fairly new to this position. Um, <clears throat> when I started at the county board, I was an LA legislative assistant to um, two supervisors for um, districts three and five which would be uh, Sheldon Wasserman, District 3, and then Marcelia Nicholson, District 5. Um, and they kind of noticed that I had some experience kind of, um, I, wanna, I don't want to really say managing, but just kind of um, overseeing uh, some people when I worked at the Office of Academic Affairs at UWM. So I was uh, given the position of intern coordinator for the um, County Board of Supervisors. Um, and since then I have been become predominantly the legislative assistant to the chairwoman who is district supervisor, um, Marcelia Nicholson. And Rachel, you can start the um, PowerPoint at this point. It's been a fast track for me, I'll say that much. And then, yeah, just go into the presenting mode. <clears throat> and I just want to talk a little bit about what the County Board of Supervisors is. Um, I think a lot of people don't necessarily know what we do or who we are. Um, and so just want to go into like a really quick overview of kind of what goes down at the County Board. Um, so you can go to the next couple slides, Rachel. And then one more. Okay, so uh, the County Board of Supervisors is the legislative body that makes up Milwaukee County government. So it's the local government. Um, just so everyone is aware, there's the county and then there's the city. So the city is the common council and the county is the County Board of Supervisors. There are 18 district supervisors who are elected by the public. We actually have an upcoming election. Um, I wanna say in the next couple of weeks, I can't remember the exact date, um, to fill the vacant seat for district 10, which is uh, at the bottom of that little, that roster. That's why there's the county seal down there. The seat is vacant right now. Um, and as I said before, there's also a chairperson on the county board who kind of oversees all of the um, district supervisors. And she is at the top left of that roster, Marcelia Nicholson, that's who I support. Um, the county board, since she became the chairwoman has really um, pushed for their mission to become uh, Wisconsin's healthiest county. And they, they're really working on doing that through um, um, a racial and gender equity lens. So any legislation that comes before the county board, they really try and focus and look through it through a racial equity and a gender equity lens. Um, and Rachel, you can go to the next slide. So a little bit more about district supervisors. Um, They're an elected position. It's actually a part-time position. Um, and so they really just act on the best interest of their district constituents or residents. We like to call them constituents. Um, and this is done through creating and supporting legislation that reflects their uh, constituent needs. Um, district supervisors sit on two to three committees. If it's two, then that normally means that they chair a committee. Um, if it's three, then they typically don't chair and they just sit on three committees. Right now, there is an audit, economic and community development, finance, health and human needs, intergovernmental relations, judiciary, safety and general services, parks, energy and environment, and personnel committee. So that's nine committees total. total. And so all of the supervisors have a hand in the kind of legislation that gets filtered through those uh, nine committees. 
A lot of them also sit on various boards of trustees for countywide entities. Um, to name a few, it would be the Milwaukee Public Museum, the Art Museum, and Milwaukee Public Library. Uh, and so even when they're not in the office or working for the office, they're out there, you know, still trying to put the best interest of the um, Milwaukee residents when it comes to like our things that we enjoy in Milwaukee County. You can go to the next slide, Rachel. Thank you. Uh, so interning for the county board has changed a little bit. Typically we, we would be in person, um, but we have had to adapt with the pandemic. So Rachel, if you'll just go to the next slide. Um, intern responsibilities at the county board um, really are just helping with county supervisors and staff on various projects related to public policy um, that could include, you know, tracking the referrals that come in for the different committees um, at that could include like researching things um, requested by different district offices. It just varies from a day to day basis. Um, you may be asked to attend committee hearings to keep track of the voting as it goes out because we do have a communications team who typically if there's a big hot ticket item, they are you know, working to put out press releases. And so sometimes they need support and just making sure that the votes are tallied correctly during committee meeting and that gets passed over to them so that they could um, correctly relay the information in a kind of a real time matter. Um, you would be supporting board supervisors at various virtual or in-person events throughout the county. Uh, this past October, we did a um, public hearing for the budget and our intern who actually just finished up with us, she really helped. Um, she came in, you know, she got that set up. We did public testimony with COVID guidelines, you know, social distancing guidelines. And so it can be something like that, or you can be asked to help uh, moderate Zoom virtual town halls. It really just depends on what the supervisors of a district office are comfortable with. Um, and you can also be requested to uh, assist county supervisors with constituent services and record retention processes. Um, that I could spend literally like an hour explaining that. It really just varies on a day-to-day -day basis. Records retention, pretty much anything that it comes through a district office is a uh, county record. And so with records retention, that project, you would literally just be um, monitoring different uh, files and what documents that come through and determining if it's something that the historical society needs to keep a hold of or if we can uh, recycle it. So it just varies. Um, it, we're trying to constantly evolve, see what can be done. Um, and like I said, with the COVID pandemic still being a concern, we've had to adapt. So we kind of do an 80-20 ratio where 80% of your intern work can and will be done virtually and roughly 20% would be done in the office. While in the office, you would have um, access to your own intern office. There currently, um, we have it set up where it's spaced out so that two interns could work at once if necessary. It's ventilated. Um, we are working on reorganizing our office in general so that we can have more spaces for working. And um, all interns are provided with a county board laptop. So that would give you access to the various applications needed to complete projects. Um, it would give you access to Microsoft Teams if you've ever used that. It's kind of like Zoom. That's how we predominantly would interact on a daily basis if we weren't in the office. Um, Rachel, you can go to the next one. Uh, we're really excited and happy and proud of the interns that we have um, been able to, you know, take on board. A lot of the time, many interns, they end up either uh, getting a position in a different department here at the county courthouse or actually with us. Um, most recently, Briciata, she was an intern in the spring of 2019 and she was just hired on as a legislative assistant this past, I want to say fall. I feel like the time is just, time is such a weird construct now. It's been all over the place, 
but she just, yeah, in 2020, she became a legislative assistant and she actually is the legislative assistant to um, the first vice chair. And she also helps me in supporting the chairwoman right now. And Madison, she actually uh, started with us in the fall of 2020. She was our guinea pig for our 80, 20, uh, you know, virtual internship uh, setup. And she did an amazing job so much so that we asked her to stay on for the spring. Um, she has been excellent. She would have stayed until the end of the spring uh, intern program uh, length, but her capstone at Concordia wouldn't allow. And so she had to leave us pretty soon, but I don't wanna spend too much time reading her quote, but you can obviously go back and read what she had to say about her time here. And uh, I just appreciate her so much because she really helped and like the feedback she gave was really good for us to kind of like build out and flush out our intern program in this more virtual um, aspect. So we're really proud of our interns. A lot of them go on to try to go on to um, positions on Capitol Hill. It's just this program itself and this office space itself, it opens up a lot of doors. Um, and at the end of the intern program, you receive a certificate um, of recognition, which is a district specific uh, record that comes from the chairwoman and myself. And also, um, you know, we provide you with a letter of recommendation if necessary. So there's always mentorship there. Um, never feel like you can't come back and ask questions and just continue to grow from us. We're very excited when uh, we hear about the accomplishments of our interns. Um, you can go to the next page, Rachel. And so to apply, um, you a requirement is that all applicants must have a cumulative GPA of uh, at least 2.75. Um, you online, you can submit your application, which will be found on the Milwaukee County Board of Interns uh, Supervisors internship page. Uh, I request that you also email me your resume and a statement of interest, so a cover letter, um, and that can be emailed to me or that can be mailed in to the office here down at the County Board. Obviously, if there are ever any questions or concerns, you you can also reach me at my number, which is at the bottom, 414-278-5041. Um, and I just want to preface again that this program with me now as the intern coordinator, we're really trying to branch out and just, I think a lot of people assume that they have to be a poli-sci major in order to intern here. You absolutely do not. Um, there's so many different avenues. There's research components. There's um, social media components. Commun public communication, um, outreach, just a lot. And under the um, guidance of our current chairwoman, Marcelia Nicholson, we're really reorganizing and revamping what it is to be um, a part of the County Board of Supervisors team. So it's always changing. There's, you know, always time um, for suggestions. And if you think something could be done better, like we real, it's a very communicative, um, process. And I just want to say also that typically eight to 10 hours a week is what we look for. If you can do more, that's great. Um, like I said, we were only anticipating having Madison on for the fall term and she did so well that we asked her if she would be willing to return for spring. So it's possible to continue on after one semester. Um, Rachel, if you want to go to the next slide. And then these are the terms that I was mentioning. Um, so the deadline for the summer term, which is coming up um, pretty soon is May 7th. However, with Madison leaving in the middle of the spring term, we are looking for interns um, right now. So if you wanted to kind of get a start on your summer intern um, program and try and get an internship with us, feel free to send in your application as soon as possible. Like I said, we're looking to cover um, or to fill the internship uh, position for the rest of May, um, April and May, moving into the summer internship uh, term. So you would just 
go all the way through from April all the way to August, if that was possible for you. Um, and with that, I believe that's it. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Zari. And for everyone, if, if you have questions for Zari or Johanna, um, continue to post those in the chat and we'll answer them during the Q&A at the end. Um, and so next, I have the pleasure of introducing um, Annalisa Heath. She is a senior at UWM and she's pursuing a double major in international studies and economics. And she's also the Department of African and African Diaspora Studies Social Media Community Specialist. And this past year, she's also been interning. She's been very busy. She's also been interning at the International Institute of Wisconsin. Um, so she's here with us today to share her experience over this past year and give a general overview of what the IIW does. So thank you, Annalise. Thank you so much, Rachel, for the introduction. So as Rachel mentioned, my name is Annalise. I am interning at the International Institute of Wisconsin. I am a senior, double majoring in economics and international studies. And I started my internship in September 2020, and I've been an intern for seven months now. So I'm going to start with giving you um, more information about the, the International Institute where I'm interning right now. And the International Institute is a non-governmental organization established in 1936. They assist immigrants and refugees in transitioning into the community by offering program, programming and support services. It's a really diverse institute, renewed by strong and open-minded personalities from different origins, ethnicities with different backgrounds and stories, but with the common desire for social justice and being able to help others. So the institute is constituted of five departments, um, the Refugee Resettlement, the Immigration and Citizens Department, the International Visitor Leadership Program, the Educational Programs, and the Interpretation and Translation Services. So I had the opportunity to work for the Immigration and Citizenship Department, allowing me to understand and analyzing from an economic point of view, how immigration works um, economically, politically, and socially. The department assists individuals and family by providing variety, low cost, legal immigration and citizenship services, such as adjustment of status for refugee and non-refugees, travel documents, petition for family members outside the United States, um, naturalization, and way more other services. So we work with immigrants from all around the world, from Asia, East Africa, South America, and country like Malaysia, China, Eritrea, Colombia, um, Jamaica, and I had the opportunity to meet uh, many of the clients. So the reason why I decided to do my internship in a non-governmental organization is because I have an interest in human rights and social justice. And the purpose of my internship was to have a better understanding on how immigration can affect the economy of a country and um, just have a political and social point of view about it. So last semester, I was working for 12 hours every week, um, twice a week. And this semester, I'm only working for eight hours once a week because I have um, another internship and have two jobs, unfortunately. So I don't have um, that much time anymore. But right now, I'm also working on my economics paper for my class because I took this internship for um, credits. So I'm working on my economics paper about the cost and benefits of immigration. So during the internship, some of my responsibilities was to supervise the Refugee Immigration Service Program, work directly with immigration attorney. My supervisor itself is a lawyer specializing in immigration and refugees law. I prepare and submit reports to affiliate agencies and the state of Wisconsin. I supervise resettlement and placement case manager and report it directly to my supervisor. And because I am bilingual in French and in, and in English, it happened that I had to do some translation works for some clients. Um, so in summary, this internship was an amazing experience, a great experience. It allowed me to meet amazing people and have a clear and a better understanding of what is a professional work environment, especially in non-governmental organization. And 
it helped me have just a better vision and clear vision of what I want to do after graduation. Um, it was an amazing human experience. I met amazing people. I met also one of my mentor who was, who was also my supervisor. And I will always remember um, the things that I learned mostly about myself and the doors that he opened for me. So thank you. Thank you so much. It was so great to hear, Annalise, about your experience, particularly as an international studies major. Um, I, I'm, I'm actually, I'm quite interested in asking you, um, you know, what, what is the main takeaway for you in terms of advice you would give to some other students listening about, you know, how they can best prepare themselves to get the most out of their internship experience? So, um... The best way to prepare yourself to get the most of the internship is really being open minded when you go to work. Um, I was like I said, I was only supposed to work for the immigration and citizenship department, but I also had the opportunity to work for the other department. Like I said, I work for the translation services. It's all about asking questions, asking all the questions that you have to your supervisor. Um, and yeah, I think this is how I I made the most out of it, asking questions, being open-minded to just meet everybody, being open to learn all about the stories. Yeah. No, that's great, thank you. Uh, and, and then for um, Johanna and Zari, I'm, I'm wondering if you could elaborate just a little bit more on the kinds of qualities that you're really interested in when you're um, you know, sifting through resumes and thinking about what kind of student would really make a great intern and be a good fit considering, you know, even things like your work environment. Maybe Zari, could you go first? Yeah, sure. Um, so when looking through resumes, I really look for applicants who um, have shown, you know, th that have a bit of office experience it, since it is an office based um, internship you know that that means you have experience and I feel like all students have experience with this but just Microsoft applications um, really good time management a lot of the time things around here move pretty quickly um, you know you may be asked to do one project but then the chairwoman could say oh we really need to get a press release going we need you know kind of to get some research and information on a specific um, community program that we want to include in the press release. We need to get this now. So it, you know, time management and just um, initiative, not necessarily always waiting for requests. If, you know, we've gone over, if we've like briefed what the week ahead looks like and we have an idea of what we're all going to be working on through the week, not necessarily waiting for me to say, okay, jump over to this next thing. Um, kind of just taking that initiative and realizing I could be doing this while also maybe creating some mailing labels. I could be researching something. So just that initiative and, mm -hmm. and like I said, really good writing skills, um, Microsoft application skills. We do a lot with um, like Excel spreadsheets and I actually, Madison helped create the uh, PowerPoint. So you know, so those kind of activities and projects, um, just that's what I look for. I look for someone who is is well versed in the Microsoft world. <laughs> Good to know. <laughs> Thanks. Mm -hmm. How about you, Joanna? Um, oh, video. Okay. Um, I mean, I, I agree with Zari, the importance of um, time management and um, initiative. So, um, you know, because we're project based really sort of trying to understand the scope of a project. Um, so on a resume, I might be looking for experience, um, either professional experience or um, school based experience um, on um, projects where they were you are a part of something from beginning to end. So a part of creating the idea, a part of carrying it through and then completing it and feeling proud of your accomplishments. Um, and that can be uh, also volunteer work. Because we're a community-based organization, um, I, a resume would stand out to me if 
there's experience either belonging to um, or volunteering at or working at a community-based organization. We're definitely um, very family-centered um, and community-centered. So um, it's a different way of operating and it's a different way of making decisions. But um, that, that definitely stands out to me. Um, I think that um, visuals and creative um, content is really important to our organization. So if you have experience designing, if you have experience just creating like a cool post for Instagram, but also if you're interested in learning that, um, if you wish you knew how to do that, um, could there, there'll be a lot of opportunities to grow. Um, so I think passion really is important to our organization because we are um, all about creative expression with all, in all of our workshops and, and programs. Um, so passion is important. Um, and then great writing skills because marketing development and curriculum um, and just communicating with people through writing is, is very important. It's, it's really interesting listening to all of you talk about the kinds of skills and qualities that you're looking for in interns because it really kind of goes back to the basics, right? Excellent public speaking skills, excellent writing skills, great communication skills. And these are all things that these interdisciplinary programs and liberal arts education can really provide for students um, because you can learn the other stuff, but you need to bring you know, some of these solid foundational skills to the table to begin with and build on those. So I think it's really good advice for our, for our students listening to hear that. Um, anybody on the, on the call have any questions that they would like to throw out here at the last minute? You can feel free to um, unmute yourself and turn your camera on if you'd like. Well, hearing, hearing no questions, um, is there anything else that any of our panelists would like to add or a closing thought that you'd like to um, leave us with? Yeah, actually, I just want to say um, for those of you listening in, you want to get kind of an idea of what the county board is about i definitely recommend going on facebook and checking out the chairwoman's um county facebook page um i can probably get a link to you guys and they can share it later on but it's uh county chairwoman marcelia nicholson on facebook and a lot of those posts this past month um in march was women's history month and so i along with um, our intern we did a series of spotlight recognitions every day, recognizing a woman in Milwaukee who's really, you know, contributed to the community. Um, and so it's that kind of researching where you have to look up these, these women's um, accomplishments and accolades and create a, a really quick condensed snapshot of what they've done in Milwaukee County. Um, those are the kind of research projects that we do um, and, you know, we're, we're always trying to figure out how can we incorporate social media more. And so if that's, if you're really into social media and you're really savvy with Facebook and Instagram, Twitter, that's something that we're also looking for. So it's not all just political science, you know, um, we really encourage diverse backgrounds um, for the county board. Great, thank you. Any, anybody else have anything to add? Well, I want to thank all of our panelists so much for contributing all of their opportunities and wisdom today for us. It's just so valuable and gratifying to know how many wonderful opportunities there are in our own community for our students at UWM. Rachel? Yeah, I just wanted to add, sorry, I was slow um, to unmute myself. Um, but just building off what Sari said, you know, um, if you're interested in interning um, with the Milwaukee County Board of Supervisors or Bembe and receiving course credit in, Afrique, um, in African and African Diaspora Studies um, or Lacuzel, um, you can definitely enroll in our 489 classes. Um, we open up their 489 internship course to all students. Um, you don't have to be an AADS major or minor. Um, but they'll receive priority uh, consideration. But as so long as you've taken a class at 300 level in AADS, you're eligible to enroll in our internship course and receive course credit while you're interning at, you know, MCB or Bembe or IIW. 
And I should add then for global studies and international studies students, of course, for global studies, an internship is required um, as a as, for the degree. Um, and it's an elective option for international studies students. So um, if you have more questions about that, please reach out to me um, at cawolf at uwm.edu. All right, well, thank you everyone so much for your participation. Um, and we look forward to seeing you at our next webinar on April 8th. Goodbye, everybody. Goodbye. Goodbye. Thank you. Thank you, everyone.